This week in Aristea 99, we're talking about Padre Mendoza. If you're looking for another healer, Padre Mendoza is your man. Coming in at four initiative, a little bit on the low side, four movements, five energy, and three health, Padre Mendoza has a defense of a green and a blue. He has a brawl of a blue and a disengage orange. For one bang, he can heal an ally within range zero to five, no line of sight required, of one wound. This is probably the defining trait for him, at least as most people think of him. But the next thing people think about with Padre Mendoza is fire. So for three points, he has the ability Flama Veritas. It is a red, it is a blue, it is a yellow, and it has a range one to four line of sight required. Um, it's actually sort of interesting that, yes, it, it's an attack, it does damage. But really what you want to do in some cases is take, instead of going for uh, actual straight out damage, which would be countered after the switch phase, you can instead delay it using the switch of one success to impose the burning state to the target. Now, Padre Mendoza is the first character to use burning in the game. In fact, you'll get your tokens for that with him. But burning is unique in that, much like poison, it is one of only two states that can stack. Normally, a state can only have one uh, exact instance of it on a character, uh, burning and poison can have many, many more, far more. Now, fire, we'll get into that after this, but it is actually a very scary state in, for a lot of people. And the nice thing about doing this is when you get the fire state on you, when it is time to resolve the fire, your defenses don't actually apply. So for instance, if you're going against Maximus and you get a, a number of successes, well, Maximus has a great defense. So converting that damage, sacrificing those successes and turning them to fire tokens, to burning tokens, means you've got a, actually a better chance of doing damage to Maximus than you would normally. Now, of course, the trick with that is <clears throat> if the states are removed from him uh, using Bachman, using um, Lakshmi, using uh, Pavarti, then it all goes away. There is an element of risk there. And certainly if you happen to have uh, a character such as, say, Eclipse, she can actually make it go off before it would normally do resolve itself, which is kind of a nice thing if you want to hurry up and uh, get some bodies going. Next up is this two-point green ability, Dios Vault. Three yellow dice with a range of one to one. You can impose the burning state to all enemies within range, so all enemies adjacent. However, should you get any defensive rolls on this, any shields, then you can impose the burning state to a target within range one to two, no line of sight required. And the nice thing too is you don't actually, you can do it and maybe not have a target there, but you can then go ahead and try and get the switch and get someone a little further out. That's kind of nice. It's actually, I would say, a potentially safer way of uh, getting burning onto characters rather than Flamma Veritas. And the fact that you can get multiple enemies is an additional bonus. However, the trade-off is, is you only impose one burning, maybe more if you can get the switch. Whereas Flamma Veritas, well, you're simply limited by your successes as to how many burning state tokens you can inflict on a single character. His orange ability, his passive, is Santal Adeo. 
At the beginning of your activation, you may heal all of your allies within the range 05, no line set required, of one wound. And this is actually much like Sinner Massacre, it just happens. So remember to do it. Uh, your opponent is under no obligation to remind you. Be polite and remind someone. But again, this becomes why he's considered the best healer in the game at the moment. Is he can heal all the allies, including himself, for one damage, every activation, every activation, provided they're within range. When you add in any possibility of getting his character switch, um, you can get more healing done. Certainly in Dale's Vault, while good for lighting a lot of people on fire and inflicting burning, the fact you're using so many yellow dice makes this to be a highly desirable way to get exclamation points. So much so that it's almost like they want to play, you want to play a risk reward game with him, and that he does his best healing when he's closer to the action, which of course puts him at tremendous risk because he only has three hit points. And let's be perfectly honest, he's got a big old bullseye right across his back. So his first tactics card is Tabula Rasa. During the action step of one of your character's activations, you can remove all damage and state tokens from all the characters of both players, even characters in the bench. This is probably the most interesting card he has. This is absolutely the most powerful heal in the game because you're removing all damage tokens. And it's certainly the most powerful uh, state clearer because you're getting everyone, including characters on the bench, characters that have not gone yet and cannot normally have states removed from them, such as that annoying negative two energy. The trick with it, the uh, cost for the benefit, as it were, is it's for everybody, both players. Uh, the timing on this is certainly going to be critical. Uh, when you use it, you cannot simply just play it. You have to think of how this is going to affect your opponent. So, for instance, if they're highly damaged as well, or they have characters waiting on the bench, playing this card heals all their characters, takes those states off. Conversely, if it's a little more uneven, say they're in pretty good shape health-wise or doing fine, but they have beneficial states on them, hidden, uh, additional initiative, things like that, then it's a little more um, desirous to do it because it doesn't benefit them as much. So you do need to think about it. You need to think about how this is going to immediately impact you because it will impact you. If they have no characters on the bench, they're all on the infirmary, even better. But you have to be very, very thoughtful when using Tabula Rasa. His next tactics card is Fiat Voluntas. During the action step of one of your character's activations, remove a to total of X, however many, burning tokens from any number of allies to remove X, the same number, uh, number of wound tokens from your allies. And again, we see where this is another amazing healing card. And it also shows where he's got to put himself in risk to get those burning states onto opponents. So if there's only one burning states on an opponent, he's only going to be able to one, heal one health. If you can get seven burning states stacked up from wherever, you can remove all those, and then you can heal seven health from your allies. It doesn't say just one, it's any of them. Um, this is great, there's no range on it, but again, it depends on you getting the burning state onto the characters. 
onto your enemies. And notice too, it says from any number of enemies. So uh, say the other team has Cosmo and they're burning states on your characters. Well, this isn't gonna help them per se. Uh, there's no range on here. So you could have Gata uh, with one health clear across the board and still be able to heal her. This is fantastic, but requires you to get burning states onto the other team. And if you're only you've got Paisa and Mendoza, that involves a, a, a measurable amount of risk. If you have Cosmo on your team, then that would help. Cosmo can also inflict burning. Uh, so these are things you want to think about. Um, if you decide to go Team Pyro, for instance, uh, adding in Fiddler with her uh, Gunjack bots, uh, they can inflict burning as well, for instance. Uh, today, Corvuspelli actually has on their web store uh, sort of a pre-order page for Double Trouble, Maybe one of those guys will add burning as well. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, next is uh, Hisset Nunk. Um, I'm undoubtedly saying that wrong. This is one of two Padre Mendoza specific tactics cards. And you know what, they're both really good. So at the beginning of the action step, the Padre uh, Mendo Mendoza's activation, you can remove all the state tokens from a character in the bench. This is nice. Then place that character on any free space adjacent to you and outside the scoring zone. So this is basically get out of jail free, come on over, we're ready for you, we need you right now, man, uh, type of card. But there are two conditions that have to be met. Uh, first off, they have to be in an adjacent free space next to you, Padre Mendoza. So if you are utterly surrounded and there is not an adjacent free space for whatever reason, you can't use this. It's not going to work. Next up is it has to be outside the scoring zone. So if you're in the scoring zone, you can't do it um, unless it is right on the outskirts. But if you're dead center, you couldn't do it. And you could not place the character in the scoring zone. So it's, but between those two conditions, I really, I don't, I don't think I would really need to belabor how amazing this is. I've used this a number of times myself. Uh, certainly being able to call in a helper, say Maximus is on the bench somehow and getting him right next to Padre Mendoza for protection is fantastic. Getting Lutea right next to Padre Mendoza, and especially if there's an enemy adjacent to you, so it's adjacent to you and you put Lutea right next to that person, he doesn't have to move and he can attack at full force. There's a lot of great opportunities there depending on the scenario, depending on the situation, but it really all boils down to you get to bring someone back in without the energy penalty, and you get to put them wherever he is, which may or may not be in a deployment area for you. So it's a great card, very useful card. Um, it's one of those cards that, um, if I was using TCOM, I probably should put to the bottom of your deck. And if I was using standard, I'd probably say no to. Finally, we have the res, non -verba. During the action step of Padre Mendoza's activation, all enemies that have a burning token have the dazzled state imposed on them. Now, this is uh, very good defensively, partly because, you know, if Padre Mendoza does that, it makes things a little bit safer for him if they're not adjacent to him. But more than that, the rest of your team having targets that cannot use their successes to hurt you from ranged attacks is really nice. Additionally, when you look at how it could possibly interact, some characters do have abilities that would feed off a Dazzled. Uh, believe that Major Luna, for instance, 
um, using one of her tactics cards, you get additional dice based off of the dazzled. So uh, this is actually a very good defensive card when you look at that. Uh, dazzled is a state, if you've been watching this series for a long time, you know that I'm a big fan of, uh, and is one of the primary reasons I put Agata on any team, not so that she can score, but so she can shut down ranged attacks. And again, it's a burning token, so it doesn't have to be Padre Mendoza to put it down. If it's using, uh, if you have Cosmo, if you have Fiddler, you can impose burning tokens on enemies. If they're using Bachman, you can start getting one character who's got a lot of them and start distributing it out. Uh, there's different ways to make use of that, but ultimately, it is a makes for a very a much safer round um, from that point on until the dazzled goes away. Now we do need to explain really quick. Um, we need to explain burning. The burning token has a red side and a blue side, just like every other token out there. So what happens is when it go is imposed red. When it flips over to blue, um, what you do is you roll an orange die for each flipped token. For each success, the character will suffer one wound. For each bang, you get to impose a new burning state to the character. So basically, it doesn't necessarily hurt them, but it doesn't go out. Now. Any other result, whether it's blank or uh, a defense, a shield, um, will cause it to do nothing. Immediately after you do this, you remove it, it is no longer there. The reason for that is a character such as Eclipse, um, if it wasn't for that, would be able to keep on flipping it over, flipping it over, flipping it over, and it would sort of break the mechanic. So, you flip it, you resolve the dice, and then it goes away. Now, again, as we noted, uh, burning does not have the limitation on it. It can stack. You can have one burning token, you can have 10 burning tokens on you. This makes it fairly dangerous, uh, especially when you consider it's got an orange success. Uh, orange die, which does have a dual success Sign and it's predominantly used for successes. It's an offensive die. It is also important to note that per the FAQ, uh, no character makes this roll. And because of that, players cannot modify it by playing tactics or activating switches. Also, as it is not a roll, normally speaking, uh, the limitation of three oranges doesn't apply. Because normally you can only roll uh, three up at most three of any die, uh, one given die. Uh, it's one burning token, one die, one burning token, one die, one burning token, one die. It doesn't break that hard limit. This is sort of what makes fire a fairly scary thing, although with a good team isn't necessarily all that bad. Uh, well, I shouldn't say good, but with the appropriate countermeasures, it's not that bad. So that's Padre Mendoza. He has been, um, he's a very solid team character. Two of his tactics and two very good tactics are usable pretty much on any character's turn. So you don't have to rely and wait on him, but his two most amazing ones um, but also a bit more situational are only on his turn. Uh, he can put on a, just a stunning amount of potential damage. It's not guaranteed damage. Can, um, there's a chance it might not go off. It could get cleared off. There's any number of things. But he can put on a stunning amount of potential damage in a way that even a character like Maximus has to be leery of and respect. Um, the fact that he is such a great healer from the get-go is fantastic, but you do have to watch the risk-reward game with him. If you've got a way of trying to protect him, 
fantastic, but he can't be too far away. He needs to be kind of close to where the action is going to be. And that's, again, risk reward is a very important part of this game, and you'll want to look out for that. And that's Padre Mendoza. Next week, I think we're going to go with Cosmo, uh, one of Bonsai Zap's favorite characters. Until then, this is Aristea99. Like, comment, and subscribe.